to defend our relationship with God. That's why many times we go on retreat. And every time we are opened and expectant, there's no limit to what God is able to do. We read about a man in my country. A point came, too many persons were coming to trouble him, so he went and blessed the river and left. And for 25 years after he died, people were sick. They took them to that river, they were healed. So even after they were long gone, their impact still remained on the earth. And then you contrast that with the life that some persons are living. They die one week later, even their own family forget them. I'm not talking about your country, your own family. One week later, everybody goes back to normal business. They forget about you. How can somebody else be so relevant that after many years, the whole generation is still referencing him? And then me, I will die. And after I live here, one month later, they have forgotten that I came. God forbid. 50 years, 100 years after I am gone, if they start talking about my work with God, angels will appear. That's the kind of life I want to live. That somebody can enter my room and they say, this is where I traveled to Scotland and I went to see the house of John Knox. They had renovated the house and everything. But the moment you enter there, you know there was a priesthood. The atmosphere has not changed. The man died in the 18th century. But if you enter the house, you will know God is here. God is here. There is something that he has trapped there. He has trapped something about God there. That even after 400 years, the place was still fresh. And people go there and they have encounters. What kind of life is that? Until today, his name is still being mentioned. That's what relevance is about. And so if our lives will count, then we too must become relevant. I didn't say we should be relevant. I said we must. Because this thing, you get it out of desperation. It's not something you relax and it happens. No, it doesn't happen. You take it. The word is to catalambano. You force it out of where it is. You know that these things are not gifted. They are collected. When Elijah was ascending, he was going to heaven with the mantle. If you can't collect it, it will go. So it is only dangerously desperate people that hold on dimensions and say, I must walk in this thing. It's a must. And when God sees your passion, when God sees your desperation, he says, okay, you qualify for it. A generation that is desperate after the supernatural will rise. In Luke 24, verse 49, when Jesus wanted to leave, the people wanted to rush out and say, we have seen you cast out devils for three years. We were with you. Everybody know we are your friends. He told them, don't move. If you move, you will die. Lecture notes, don't cast out demons. Lecture notes, don't advance the kingdom. He said, tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. The reason is because the moment you announce that you are a disciple of Jesus, you become a danger, an endangered species. Every demon will want to pull you down. All the forces of darkness will want to pull you down. Ask Christians who walk with Jesus, they will tell you. The moment they say they want to serve God and they start praying, their business will crash. They will suddenly start having problems with their bosses. Their head will come under attack. Because if you announce that you belong to Jesus, hope you know that there are two governments on earth. There is the government of light and there's the government of darkness. And as you know, every time there are two opposing governments, if you know you don't have power, just lie low. Because the day you identify with one government, the other government will turn you to an enemy. This is why if you say you are a disciple of Jesus, you must have what? Power. In Acts 1 8, he said, Not many days from now, he said, You shall receive the Holy Ghost and power, and you shall be witnesses unto me. So, if you have not received power, you cannot be my witness. If you have not received power, you cannot be my disciple. So, everyone who says he's a disciple must press for power. Listen, it is not ambition to desire power, power is for safety. And power is the only means by which you will glorify God. Because the kingdom of God suffered violence. Only the violent can take it. And when they take it, they take it by what? By force. If you don't have power, you will die in evangelism. I'm telling you. If you don't have power, you will die the moment you open the ministry. Because the demons who were not aware of you will suddenly say, who is this? How did you come here? And they will begin to launch attacks from everywhere. This is why he told them, don't run out with stories. Wait until you carry power. 
And so power is a very vital component in the school of discipleship. In Matthew chapter 10 verse 1, hear what the Bible said. Every time disciples are commissioned, they are commissioned with power. When he had called the 12 disciples to him, he gave them what? Power. When he called them, he gave them power. Because if they don't have power, they will have a lot of burial ceremony. They needed power to be disciples. And you too will need power. I told them in the morning, demons don't leave the earth. Oh. You can stand up and say, set and die. It's ignorance. <laughs> There's no Satan who is dying anywhere. You can say, you devil, I cast you out of the earth. You are joking. He will be here until the day of judgment. So the demons that fought Paul are the ones you are fighting with. The demons that fought Peter are the ones you are fighting with. The demons that fought in the Bible days are the ones you are fighting. So if you don't have the power that those in the Bible days have, you will be a victim. Because the reason they survived those demons is not by story, it's not by suit, it's not by watch, it's not by shoe, it's by power. So if they survive them by power, you too must have power because the demons have not changed. When you cast them out, they are wandering on the earth. If they don't have anybody to enter, they are waiting for the next generation. The moment the next generation comes, they return. There was a time when we went somewhere to preach and they told us there was a girl who was demonized. Let's start from there. We said, no, let's preach first. They said, no, our problem is, was bigger than all of us went forward. I said, what do you mean? Come here. He thought he was talking to a girl. He didn't know that one of the seven, the demons that dealt with the seven sons of Skiba, after they dealt with them, they spread across the world. And one came to that sister. He came and held the sister, pulled her, said, you devil, come out. As he was talking, before he knew what was happening, the kid gave him. <laughs> this huge giant, the moment the gear landed him, <laughs> he lost his stability. What? He now looked at himself, is it me you slap? He came back and... <laughs> that was when we knew we had lost the battle. Because instead of connecting to power, he was using human ability. He thought because he was a giant, he could intimidate that demon. The demon is older than you, wiser than you, stronger than you. The only way you can deal with that demon is to connect to the power of the Holy Ghost. The new creation rules over the devil if he has understanding. If he doesn't have understanding, the devil will rule over him. So the question is not whether you are above the devil or not. Yes, you are above the devil. But do you have the understanding to function above the devil? That's where the problem is. And so every disciple must have power and know how power works. If you don't, you'll be in trouble. Now let's begin with delegated power. There are two kinds of power that are under delegated power. You have what is called exousia and you have what is called dunamis. In John chapter 1, from verse 11 to verse 12, the Bible said he came into the world, although the world was made by him, but the world knew him not. He said, but as many as received him, to them he gave exousia to become the sons of God. Exousia is power of antonym. Hear this. If you want to walk in delegated power, you must have revelation of who you are in Christ. If you don't have the revelation of who you are in Christ, the devil will throw some signs to find out if you know. So you find a Christian, who has headache, he's running to paracetamol. You'll find a Christian who is confused. He's not talking to the Holy Ghost. He's asking unbelievers to help him. Then when demons come, that Christian will now wake up and say, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. The devil will say, you don't know who you are. Because when we flashed you, your actions show that you don't know who you are. Before you cast out demons by exousia, you must show them you know who you are. So for those of us who work in exousia, we function by revelation. Revelation of who we are in Christ and revelation of what Jesus has done for us. So if I am attacked by sickness, before I call a doctor, I will call heaven. That action, I may not even be healed, but at least the devil knows I know that I am born of God. But if I am attacked by fever, I'm attacked by headache, and the first thing I do is to run to a chemist, it means I don't know that eternal life is on my inside. And if I don't know that eternal life is on my inside, how can I prove to the devil that I know that I have authority over him? So when you are living your life, they are watching to see what you know about the new creation. So you have exousia, but for you to walk in it, you must have the revelation of who you are in Christ. And if you have that revelation, it will show in your daily life. When you are attacked with sickness, what do you do first? When you need direction, what do you do first? 
when people offend you, what do you do first? That revelation will have to impart on all of those things. That's the sign that shows that now you know you are born of God. And when you begin to operate by that revelation, before you talk, the demons will go. Because that's how exousia works. It's called delegated power. It's the power of antonym. It works by revelation. And so if you want to operate exousia, you must have revelation. This is why you study. This is why you pray. So that God will keep renewing your mind to know what is available to you. The second delegated power we have is dunamis. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. It says not many days from now. It says you shall receive the Holy Ghost and dunamis. And you shall be witnesses unto me. You see the way Jesus was operating. You, be, you must have power before you witness. You will receive the Holy Ghost and dunamis to be witnesses unto me. What is dunamis? Dunamis is potential power. So why exousia is power of antonym, dunamis is potential power. So dunamis is resident on your inside. But for dunamis to work, you must provoke it. So in Ephesians 3.20, the Bible says God is able to do, exceeding abundantly above all you ask or think, according to the power at work in you. So if dunamis is not working, God will not be able to do. So the reason many people carry power and die is because they don't know how to activate it. So why you activate exousia through revelation? You activate dunamis through spiritual engagement. So a man who wants to walk dunamis must learn how to pray through. You must pray until you pray through. If you pray and the dynamo peaks, you will know. That's why I was telling you yesterday that for one person, it may take six hours. For another person, it will take eight hours. For another person, it will take ten hours. But by all means, if you want dunamis to work, you must pray through. Because that thing is like a machine. You activate it. And so a man who knows dunamis will not just wake up and confront a demon and say, I have dunamis. Get out. Dunamis is a power that creates change. But for that power to work, you must activate it. And the way you activate it is to engage it. And there are many ways to engage it. You can engage it through speaking in tongues. You can engage it through worship. You can engage it through the Rema word. But by all means, if you want to work dunamis, you must activate it. And so when, you, when I'm going for a meeting, for example, and I want to change things in people's lives, I don't just wake up and go for that meeting because I've read the Bible. I've read the Bible, but the dynamo is not working. So I will have to lock myself indoors. Sometimes I worship for three hours. As I'm worshiping, I'm crying. I'm crying. Sometimes I'm playing a video. I'm seeing somebody moving in power. And as I see some dimension, the dynamics in me start working. Sometimes my stomach starts shaking. It starts shaking. And a point comes, I get drunk in the Holy Ghost. And I'm alone in my room. As I'm praying, sometimes I start running in my room. I start running. Sometimes I start singing. Until a point comes, the thing becomes like a river. It starts running over. When it enters that level, if I go for that meeting, I know. The power was moved, must move, whether the devil likes it or not. So dunamis is delegated, but you must activate it. So the reason many Christians, although they have power, they are not working in power is because the devil gets them too busy to activate it. The woman carries power, the young man carries power, but he never activates it. And every day he is working with potential up and down. He has the ability to cause cancer. Cancer will shrink, but it's a potential. He has the ability to change the fortune of men, but it's a potential. Even the ministry is sinking. And the devil will come and put a movie before him. He's watching. He's watching. He puts pornography. He's watching. And the more he watches, the more dormant he becomes. But those of us who know how this power works, we don't allow anything to enter there that is not of God. And so we create a gate around our soul. We create a gate around our heart. We wake up in the morning singing in the spirit. In the afternoon, we are worshiping. In the night, we are praying in tongues. And even when we are tired, we cannot pray. We are hearing somebody else pray. So sometimes you enter my room, I'm playing tongues. Because when a man of prayer is praying, it transmits energy. So now I know I cannot pray. But I'm hearing somebody else who carry that. You know, this thing is in, is in measures. There are some people who are heavyweight. When they start praying, as you are hearing it, after a while, the energy begins to move. It begins to move. You who were tired and couldn't pray before, after 30 minutes, you see your legs start doing like this. Because when tsunami starts, you can't be in one place. Your legs start shaking. After a while, you stand up from your bed. After a while, you start chewing. Malak. 
Irede dia toa. Ebe ba katwale. Aratwa tatwa. Zakapata. After a while, you will now see that even you, you start transiting. You that was lying down like a lamb, you become a lion, and then you jump up. Beruate. Ebe katwa. Rakida takakato. Ozeado toa. Enti takaparut. Asizanota. Eriado toa. You know what you are doing? You are roaring in the spirit. And when you start roaring, the devil will say, "Ah, the lion is awake. Let's hide." Did you not read about Jesus when he came down after fasting and prayer? He entered the temple and the demons began to cry. Why have you come to torment us before our time? Because they were touching the fire. They were touching it because now the power has activated and is flowing like a river because out of their bellies shall flow rivers rivers of living waters if they beg you to pray it means you are not ready if they beg you to worship it means you are not ready why do you think when i come i say where is sister temio it's not it's not about her it's about what comes out of her spirit there's an activation there's an activation so there are times when you can lock yourself in your room for the whole day you gather playlist there are playlist of war there are playlist of ascension There are playlists of encounters. You gather them and you are playing them. One play for four hours and you are just under that atmosphere. Mingro paragas, Cecilia pararadwas, Veverakas, Rakadia putas. And sometimes you can be in your room. The river will flow from Nigeria to Zambia. That's why they call you. It's not because of your face. It's not because of your skin color. It's because anywhere the river enters, your dominion comes there. And nobody can stop you. And when you come, the demons will know because they have interacted with your reality before you came. Not many days from now, you shall receive the Holy Ghost and power. Every one of us who is born again will carry power. The problem is that the devil has changed our language. So instead of chanting in the Holy Ghost, we are complaining about house rent. Instead of blasting in tongues, we are complaining about who is gossiping us. All of those things are theatrics of demons. When they are gossiping you, pray. When there is no house rent, pray. When they are attacking you, pray. If that river begins to flow, it will swallow all your problems. It will swallow them. But if you face your problem, the river will never flow. So if you want to address things by authority, delegated authority, you must have revelation, and you must also have. Activated spirit. See, some of us are rusty. Where we are now, we will need 40 days fasting to begin to feel that energy, because the thing is rusty. Debris have covered it. Some of us, where we are now, we may need to pray for 10 hours for one week for the thing to come alive. And see, if it comes alive, you will know. You will feel it, because you may not feel exusia, but you must feel dunamis. Sometimes dunamis comes on you like fire. Sometimes it comes like cold water. Sometimes it runs through you like electricity. There are times when I'm praying and my stomach begins to shake. I know that this power has overshadowed my soul. It's now on my body and it's shaking. Sometimes my hand is burning and you are in your room. You are you are twisted. The thing is on you. You so you start looking for where to offload it. So when you come for the service, you say take. It's because something is happening. You can't contain it. The battery is overcharged and you don't want to explode. So you share with some people. What you call impartation is to offload what you carry on some people, so that they will use it for some time. You have too much, but you see, when you grow, you won't even need it because you too can charge yourself to that level. He said, "You dearly beloved, building up yourselves upon your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying, praying, praying." Somebody's battery is about to wake up. Somebody's battery is about to wake up. As I'm talking to you now, the Holy Ghost is going to give some of you fresh wine. You will begin to be drunk, drunk in the spirit, because there's a battery that is too dead that needs to wake up. Zambia is looking for the overcomers. You cannot be dormant. The fire must come alive again. The river must flow again. And so I prophesy over you now, every dead dimension of God in your spirit, awake. I wanted to talk to you about generated power. There are two types of generated power. One is called iskus, another one is called kratos. See, dunamis and exusia works with demons and circumstances. But when you want to deal with principalities, you need another dimension of power. So what you need is not dunamis and exusia. Dunamis and exusia deals with demons and circumstances. But when you are dealing with principalities and powers, 
you need Kratos and Iskos. If you study Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10, he said, having done all to stand, stand therefore. And he said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The word power of his might is Kratos of his Iskos. It's when you are strong in those power that you cannot put on the whole armor of God and fight against principalities. If you study Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 18 to verse 21, you are still going to see Kratos and Iskos there. What is Kratos? Kratos is a type of dunamis. But you see, for you to activate dunamis, you pray through. So if I pray for 10 hours, dunamis will be activated. But for you to activate Kratos, you will have to pray consistently. So a man who prays for 10 hours can go to a meeting, demons are expelled, changes are created. But you see, he can come back from that meeting and the devil can attack his family. But if you want to walk against principalities, hope you know, you cast demons out, but you don't cast principalities out. Principalities have bodies, they are fallen angels. So they don't need to possess men. So when you are working with exousia and dunamis, you deal with demons and circumstances. If you want to work with principalities, Ephesians 6, 10, Ephesians 1, 18 to 20, where principalities are in question, you are going to see that it's Kratos and Iskus. Kratos is consistent power. So a man who wants to walk and deal with principalities must pray at least every day for 30 minutes. If your prayer is not consistent, you cannot deal with principalities. Because principalities are not demons. They work with laws of the spirit. When they come, they possess a territory. They create a culture in that territory. That's why you see that most of our miracle services, we cast out demons, we open blind eyes, but the corruption in society remains. So, abortion is going on. Pornog uh, prostitution is going on. Because the people, the princes responsible for abortion are not demons. They are principalities. The beings respond, responsible for pornography and are not demons. The priests responsible for prostitution are not demons. They are fallen angels. Those ones control territory. So you must have beyond dunamis to deal with them. So the man who can talk and a territory opens is one who does not just pray through, but he has a consistent prayer life. So some pray 20 minutes every day and they have done it for five years. Some pray 30 minutes. Some pray one hour and they have done it for five years. If two of you come for a meeting, the one who prayed through can do impartation. But the one who prayed for five years, for 30 minutes, if he talks, you will see the impact after two weeks. You will now discover that the government has changed. The wicked king has died. You will discover that abortion has been abolished. Because that one addresses princes. What he's working with is not dynamics, it's Kratos. It's generated power. Then you have what we call Iskus. Why Exusia is authority based on revelation, Iskus is authority based on obedience. Because I can have revelation of who I am in Christ, cast out a demon and still fornicate. So I can deal with demons by revelation, but I cannot deal with principality by revelation. If a principality comes, he will tell you, who are you? How dare you tell? Hope you know when Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, a prince went to him and said, if you are the son of God. They are not moved by feeling. They are moved by the weight of your obedience. That's why the Bible said, having done all to stand, stand therefore. And he said, when your obedience is complete, then you can avenge all disobedience. So if you want to grow in authority, you must begin from revelation of who you are in Christ, but you must graduate into obedience. You must come to a point where you don't violate God. Because if you are violating God, you can cast out some demons. You can walk in a gift, but you cannot talk to the prince of the land. Only the man whom the devil comes and checks and finds nothing can address him. The Bible said, Jesus talking, he said, the prince of this world come to me and he found nothing. So when you talk, because they have no stake over you, they have no choice but to obey you. So people who walk in authority don't only have exousia, they also have iskus. Exousia is revelation based on your position with Christ, but iskus is your obedience based on the authority of the Holy Spirit. If those two does not come together, we cannot change our territory. And the last dimension of power is entrusted power. There are two types of entrusted power. One is called anakazo. Another one is called alke. Anakazo is compelling force. Luke 14, 23. He said, go into the highway and compare them. When a man has an akazo, when he talks, his word is a law. And if territories will be rebuilt, then we need those who carry an akazo to appear. How does an akazo work? An akazo work by following the leading of the Holy Ghost. If the Holy Ghost says, turn right, turn right, turn left, turn right, turn left. So you say according to what you are told. I prophesied as I was commanded. So it's not your voice they are hearing. It's the voice of the Holy Ghost. You are an amplifier. 
a man who walks in an castle is obedient to the Holy Ghost and he only corresponds what the Holy Ghost is saying. So he can come for a service, he is moved to talk, but the Holy Ghost is not talking, he will keep quiet. But when the Holy Ghost talks and he talks, even dry bones can become a great army because his word compels. His word is a law. And then you have what we call Alke. Alke is influence. When you check your Bible and you see the word ruler, most of the times it's either Alke or Alke Lacrino. It means influence. Hope you know when Jesus died, no disciple could get a grave. They took Simon of Armantia to talk to the governor to get a grave. That is called influence. So the church must also have enough influence where presidents hear us, where governors hear us, where kings hear us. But the way God entrusts that power to you is when you build virtue. A man can build dunamis by praying through. He can build exousia by revelation. He can build iskus by praying, by obeying God. He can build kratos by praying consistently. He can build anakazo by following the leading of the Holy Ghost. But if he wants to have influence, he must build character and virtue. Humility. He said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. He said, in due season, he will exhort you. That one is called humility. So when you find people that have influence over nations, when they talk, the nations shake. It's because God has put his dread upon them. There is a kind of authority they have that is not revelation, it's character. And so if our generation want to wield that level of power, we must adopt the way of humility, of brokenness, of kindness. Every virtue that comes from the Holy Ghost, we must build it if we will have influence. Otherwise, the kings won't hear us. The rulers will not hear us because it takes influence. But when you have influence, even when you don't invite them, they will come. They will be the ones that want to associate with you. How do you think Moses walked to Pharaoh? You think it's by revelation or by speaking in tongue? It's by commitment. The Bible told us in Numbers 12, 3 that Moses was the meekest of all men. He was the humblest of all men. So because of that, God invested something on his life. So much so that even Pharaoh could not think of killing him. It's a taboo. We want to walk in power. We must have delegated power. We must have generated power. And we must have entrusted power.